Ever since I was little, I've dreamed of escaping to a beautiful little cabin somewhere in the middle of a gorgeous forest. And here in the Pacific Northwest, I have now met a builder who is constructing incredible homes that not even my childhood self could have dreamed of. Hey Jacob! What's up Bryce? Good How to you meet doing? you man. Good to meet you too. This cabin, it's hard to call it a cabin really isn't it? it I, I want to <laughs> actually just call it art. It's kind of like a sculpture that you live in I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's what I go for when I try to build is try to make a sculpture that people can live in and exist in. I wanted to make a space that people could be in and um, I had this vision in my head of of what a building would look like. And ever since I was a kid, I had this little book about um, tiny houses and it's called Wood Butcher's Art, I think. And I just thought fairies and hobbits and goblins lived there and I wanted to do it myself and make some in my adult life too, I guess. And I want the shelter to tell a tale and, and kind of show itself as a painting almost. So when you walk up on it, I want you to be stunned by it the same way you would be stunned by a waterfall or stunned by a mountain when you see one. I want people to look when they first kind of lay eyes on something I've made, I want them to go, whoa, that's so cool. <laughs> that's what I want. And I guess if that's what art is, then it's art, so, you know, art that you live in. How did this project actually come to be? I met someone who lived in one of these cabins and I completely fell in love with the girl in the cabins and um, I started living in them. And so I went from one cabin to the next and lived for a while in each one and then started to think like I could build a cabin. And so I asked the property owner and I built here. That's how it came to be, I guess. I just, I went for it. One of the things that's really striking to me about this cabin is how it looks like it's just meant to be here. I, want, I wanted to make it look like it was part of the environment. That's part of the goal. But not, you know, like sort of the touch of a human, but still kind of honoring what, what the environment is around it. And that's especially true of what you've done with this roof, because the way that mm. you've actually covered it with all of the moss, how did you even do that? Is there a metal roof under there? Or? So this is, so with this cabin in particular, I wanted the framing of the roof to be exposed because the inside has this really cool uh, beam system and rafter system, and I wanted you to see the pattern that created. So I started by just, you know, frame the rafters, frame the boards for the sheathing, and uh, everything is salvaged from different places, different job sites. This is like an old bowling alley for oh, the wow. deck and the beams came from a building in Tacoma, Washington. So back to the roof though, there's the sheathing and then I laid weather resistant solid insulation on top of the sheathing on the outside, then put strapping on it, then put metal roofing on it, then put chicken wire on it, and then went around and I like, you know, foraged for moss. and. There's, you know, in this forest, there's moss everywhere. So just kind of collected moss a little bit from different trees so as not to kind of take too much from one place. And then you just take the, you take the moss and you kind of stuff it in the chicken wire and it just kind of grows together. So you stuff a few spots and then it kind of weaves and grows amongst itself and takes off. This was kind of, I wanted it to be a cruciform because I really thought that a cross-like shape would really look cool for the roof. And I think churches and cathedrals are really amazing. Often a lot of energy is put into building them. And I love the angles on churches. And so this was kind of supposed to be like a cathedral in the middle of the rainforest. That's what I was kind of going for. A non-denominational secular cathedral. <laughs> you can worship anything you want out in this cathedral in the forest. But that's kind of what I was going for with the steep roof pitches. If I remember correctly, this is a 12-12, maybe even slightly steeper. But then these side ones are 72 degrees, so like very, very steep. The <laughs> other thing that really stands out to me is the way that you've used all of these windows. The mm. fact that these are all reclaimed mm -hmm. just makes it all the more impressive. You have to be willing to let the materials guide the building as opposed to you forcing the 
the materials upon the building, if that makes sense. So like this wall was framed out based on what that window was and what those little windows were. And I like how it's different. I like how it's not cookie cutter. So what was your agreement for building it here on this property? The agreement was I provide the labor and provide a finished livable space and I get access to it for two years. And I finished it the day I left because <laughs> I, so I never really got to enjoy it complete. I mean, me being done with a building is really different than the building itself being finished. When I walked out of here eight years ago, I was finished, but the building wasn't. And since I've left, people have added all sorts of things. I think the dude has like a, a jacuzzi or something like that. I mean, and this little fireplace, my fire pit was nowhere near as good as that fire pit. But to have people care about it enough that they want to put their own touches into it, that's awesome. And do you think we could take a look inside? Yeah, definitely, let's do it. Come in. Oh. You know, from the outside, this kind of looked like a whimsical cabin in the woods, but stepping inside, it's all of a sudden become a home. A home, that's the word. It's impossible as well to ignore the location. I mean, we're right here in the middle of the beautiful Pacific Northwest forest. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can imagine sitting down in that sofa, it must still feel like you're connected to the outdoors. Yeah, I mean, there's just like veils of moss everywhere. and six different kinds of ferns and you know giant trees it's it's hard not to feel in awe of the landscape when you're here so can you tell me a little bit more about the actual construction of this house mm. the design and how all of this came to be the way that it is now i always start with the floor with this one i wanted to be a cruciform which is just you know in 290 degrees. You're also limited by space, so it had to be under 200 square feet to avoid having to pull permits. So that's where I started. And then the walls grew out of there and all the materials are salvaged. So that's where the kitchen sink came from and that whole countertop. This is a RV stove. So I think I got this on Craigslist. These were all scraps, you know, <laughs> used every single little piece. What do you think really influenced the style of how you built this cabin? Like all of these really beautiful mm. exposed beams and all of that sort of thing. I mean, a main focus for me was what the, the roof, and if I can take you up to the loft, you can see another really, like maybe one of the most essential things uh, that went into my thinking about this cabin was wanting to leave all of the framing exposed. Like one thing that kind of always has bothered me is that in building, we always cover up the skeleton. You know, the, the skeleton is covered up on the inside and it's covered up on the outside, but the skeleton is cool, you know, like ribs and everything. And so that's kind of what this effect that I was trying to go for was I wanted you to see what it is that's holding you up. And what's holding us up are these two big beams that are kind of mortised into each other. And then these jack rafters and valley rafters. And they're essentially like the ribs of, I talk about it like it's a person, but <laughs> they're the ribs of the cabin. And I really love what you've done over here with the roof window as well, because that's just so perfectly placed. The skylight? It? Yeah. Thanks. Well, yeah, you know, I knew that this is where people would be sleeping and I, knew that, I didn't know, but I anticipated that that's where you would place your head. And so I thought, you know, I was thinking like when you wake up in the morning, that's where you're gonna, you're gonna, you're like this, and you kind of tilt your head over and boom, there's where it is. A project like this is naturally gonna be really hard to gauge because obviously so much time, effort, labor went into it. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking just about material cost of this project, what did it actually physically cost you to build? The original arrangement was, I think I got 2000 from him, the property owner, and then I put about 4000 into it maybe. And then since then, uh, Cullen has put the water and the electric, I think he put another 1500 into it. So all in all, maybe 7500 bucks for it. For me that's really inspiring because I think it goes to show that if you find an amiable landowner, if you're not afraid of putting a little bit of work and effort into it, mm -hmm. this is a really achievable dream, isn't it? Oh, I would say 
the land is the biggest thing. If you can find someone who owns property because, you know, property is not easy to come by. But if you find that property, someone who's willing to let you build, anyone could do it. I didn't really know what I was doing when I started. And through doing it and making mistakes, I think I learned it. And you're actually building another one here on this property, aren't you? Yeah, right down the way through the woods. Well, should we go over to the other yeah, one and have a look? Yeah, let's check it out, man. Let's check it. All right. Let's head on through the forest. So this is my latest and um, I haven't finished it yet, so no, it's not done, but <laughs> I've put about 22 days into it. The kind of inspiration for it was a octagon and then I wanted to make a pyramid roof and when I finished it, I kind of, it kind of looks like a crown, kind of looks like Max's crown and where the wild things are. So. Uh, sometimes I've been taken to calling it Max's crown. And you know, one of my favorite things is to, um, after I do something or put a piece up, to kind of stumble back and uh, then turn around and look <laughs> like and surprise myself by it. And then you're like, oh man, there it is, wow. And uh, you know, when I look at my hands, I kind of feel like it's, uh, they kind of tell the history of the whole thing because of just what, what they've done, how they've gotten hurt what they've created and it's awesome. I love building. I don't know what I like more, building it or looking at it after I built it or <laughs> looking at other people enjoy it. That I think is the best when, other, when I see other people and they're enjoying a space that I've created, I feel like I've done something pretty special. Seeing what you've done here in this place is just so inspiring to me. The way that you have crafted everything so beautifully using these incredibly innate geometric patterns, the structures that you have built are just completely remarkable. And we're gonna come back and visit this place. I'm not gonna say when it's finished, right? but when you're further <laughs> down the track, yeah. and we're gonna see what this has become. Yeah, well awesome, you're welcome to stay here anytime, so please come back. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. When I traveled to this property, I knew that I was coming here to see something very special, but I wasn't quite prepared for just how taken aback I would be by these cabins. There's something about the way that they've been constructed and how they so perfectly fit into this beautiful natural surroundings that makes me think of them not just as homes, but truly works of art. If only everything in life was crafted just so beautifully.